Hi, I'm Caitlin, and welcome to video 4 of the Quick Start series for the Analog Discovery 2. In this video, we'll introduce the oscilloscope tool in Waveforms 2015. Oscilloscopes are used to graphically display time-varying signals. They are incredibly useful, but can be bulky and expensive. The Analog Discovery 2 provides a 100 mega sample per second, 30 megahertz bandwidth, 14-bit, and two-channel oscilloscope. You can access the oscilloscope from the orange and blue wires on the flywire assembly. The orange wire corresponds to channel 1, and the blue wires correspond to channel 2. You'll notice that there are two orange wires and two blue wires. The wire with the white stripe corresponds to the negative side of the channel. Once in the scope window, you'll have a menu bar with four options, file, control, view, and window. File allows you to create a new instance of the scope, save your current configuration, open an existing configuration, close the scope, import data, or export data. You can export data as an image file, including a time and device stamp, or as raw data. You can import data as a text, CSV, or audio file. Control allows you to run a single acquisition, continuously run, or stop the oscilloscope. The view window gives you a large variety of options on how to view your data, so I'll go through each one. Under the view menu, if you click zoom, waveforms will open another pane that shows a zoomed in version of the signal. You can drag around the plot to find the spot you need to zoom into. Add XY adds a plane that contains an XY plot. This can be particularly useful for plotting things such as current voltage characteristic curves. FFT opens the Fast Fourier Transform view. This view plots the data as amplitude versus frequencies. The histogram view plots the distribution of values for each voltage value, with the number of times the signal has a certain voltage value represented as a percentage. The persistence view shows multiple acquisitions on the same window with more frequent waveforms drawn with hotter colors than rarer ones. Clicking on data opens a table of all the data from the samples with columns for time, channel 1, and channel 2. Clicking measurements opens the measurements pane. Here you can add a selection of built-in measurements as well as custom measurements. Logging opens another scripting interface where you can create custom data acquisitions, logging, or process information. Audio allows you to play the data as a sound using the default audio output of the computer. X cursors will open the X cursor pane. Here you can add normal cursors or delta cursors to measure points and the difference between the points on your plot. Y cursors will open a similar pane, but the cursors will lie on the Y axis. Digital allows you to enable or disable the digital channels from within the oscilloscope. The final menu item is Window, that allows you to switch between active waveforms windows. Below the menu bar, you have two buttons that you'll see in many of the waveforms windows, Single and Run. Single starts a single acquisition, while Run will run until you hit the button again. Next to that, you can select the mode of the Run button. Repeated mode runs repeated acquisitions. Scan screen runs a scan acquisition where the data is drawn from left to right. Scan shift is similar to screen, but instead of continuing the plot from left, when the right side is reached, it will slide to the left. Record allows you to capture a large number of samples at lower rates. In this mode, the samples are streamed through USB, so you're limited to one mega sample per second. Below that is buffer. This allows you to change the PC buffer position that the acquisitions are stored at. Clicking the plus button saves the current acquisition to a new tab. To the right of these options, begin the trigger options. You can select between three modes, normal, auto, and none. In normal mode, the acquisition is triggered only on the specified condition. In auto mode, if the trigger condition doesn't appear within two seconds, the acquisition is started. If you select none, the acquisition is started without a trigger. Below that is the auto set button. This button automatically adjusts the enabled real time and math channels, as well as the trigger configuration according to the input signals. Below that, you can select between edge, pulse, and transition trigger types. For edge triggering, you can select between rising and falling edge triggered. If the trigger type is pulse, then the oscilloscope will trigger if a positive or negative pulse has a smaller or larger length than that that is set by the user. Transition is similar to pulse, but the transition time of a signal is compared with a set length. HIST allows you to enter a value to adjust high and low values. Level is the voltage level at which the scope triggers. 
Low and high values are determined by the trigger value plus or minus the hysteresis value. Length condition is where the pulse length or transition time for pulse and transition trigger options are entered. Hold off allows you to select an adjustable period of time during which the oscilloscope will not trigger. For more information about these triggering options, visit the Help tab in Waveforms 2015. If you click the gear, you will see two additional options. You can specify the number of buffers, and Filter determines how the trigger source is sampled. On the right side of the window, you have options for the input channels. In the time box, you can specify the position of the center of the x-axis and a time base. You can select a position of between positive and negative 500 hours. You can select a time base of between 10 nanoseconds per division and 2.4 kilohours per division. If you click on the green down arrow, it will expand more options to allow averaging, oversampling, number of samples, and sample rate. You can specify between 32 and 8192 samples and a sample rate of between 1 Hz and 100 MHz. By default, channel 1 and channel 2 options will be visible. You can specify the channels you want to display by unchecking or checking their checkboxes. You can even add new channels. You can add simple math channels with one function or a custom math channel specified by combining other simple math functions. Digital channels can also be added and reference channels including imported data can be added. For each channel, you'll have the same set of basic options. The offset value sets the center of the y-axis and the range defines the scale. You can select an offset value of between negative 25 and 25 volts and a range of between 100 microvolts per division and 5 volts per division. If you click on the gear, expanded settings will appear. You can change the color of the waveform Select the units of the offset, show or hide noise, change the display mode range, select probe attenuation, change the channel units, set the sample mode, export data, and change the name and label of the channel. You can change the offset divisions to division or voltage. The range mode can be set to per division, plus, minus, or full. The attenuation can be set to 0.1 times, 1 times, 10 times, or 100 times. Channel units can be amps, voltage, or watts. There are three sample modes to choose between. Decimate will record only the nth conversion. Average will average the conversions. And using min and max, each two samples will be calculated as the minimum and maximum value of the conversion results. Export allows you to export the data as an image or as raw data. If you export it as an image, you can add a date, time, and device stamp and choose between 10 different file types. If you export as raw data, you can select CSV, text, or TDMS. There are more options on the plot window itself. In the top right-hand corner of the plot is a small y, and in the bottom left is an x. Both of these can be used to add the cursors we talked about previously. More plot options can be accessed via the gear in the top right corner. From there, you can add labels, measurements, and change the plot color and width. Now that we've taken a walk around the tool, let's do a simple example. I'll need a simple time-dependent circuit with a resistor, capacitor, and 5-volt power supply. We'll use the connections of the power supply as a simple switch. If I unplug the power supply, the switch is off. If I plug in the power supply, the switch is on. We'll use oscilloscope channel 1 to measure the output of the capacitor. Make sure the switch is turned on to begin with. Go to the scope window and click Run. Now, if we turn off the switch, we'll see the yellow line eventually come into view and then settle back to zero. If we make some adjustments to the viewing window, we should be able to see things more clearly. Enter negative 5 volts into the offset. This will set the center of the plot to 5 volts. Next, select 1 volt per division in the range box. Now click run again and switch on the battery. Channel 1 will jump up to 5 volts. If you switch off the circuit, you'll see the trace slowly start to fall. We still can't see all the data. Go to the time box and enter 2 seconds per division into the base. Make sure the switch is off for at least 20 seconds and click scan to start acquiring data. We'll wait a few seconds and close the switch. This will display the charging of the capacitor. If we want a larger acquisition time, we can increase the time base and zoom in later, but the resolution will go down. Now let's capture a different set of data. Make sure the switch is on. Click scan and after 2 seconds, turn off the switch. Let the gray bar move all the way to the right and then click Stop. Let's examine the data. Go to the View menu and click Measure. Go to the View menu again and click X Cursors. 
In the Measurements pane, click Add and then Defined Measurements. Make sure Channel 1 is selected and double-click Vertical. Add a maximum and close the window. Go to the X Cursors pane and click Normal to add a vertical cursor. Click it again to add another cursor. In the X Cursors window, make sure the Reference column says None for Cursor 1 and 1 for Cursor 2. Enter 2 seconds in the Delta X column. Move Cursor 1 to a point on the plot where Channel 1 has dropped below the maximum value. Here we can check out the time constant for our circuit. The oscilloscope tool is a great tool for recording data and taking measurements. Our next video will cover the waveform generator. Subscribe to stay up to date with Digilance products and services. Thanks for watching!